The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 21st, the Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening at the normal time, thanks so much for doing that. We'll make this show as pertinent as we can for you during that 11 o'clock hour. But if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. So you can reach us at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, but you still have a question, then go ahead and send me an email. Send it early. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And if you'd be so kind to put radio show question in that subject, then, of course, inside our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. So at 808 in the morning, we've got all U.S. equity futures trading the downside. Dow's off 172 points, about six tenths of a percent, one percent for the Nasdaq. That's 111 points. The S&P down six tenths or 24 points. And the Russell's off seven points. That's about four tenths to the downside. Over in Asia last night, a bit of a mixed bag. You had the Shanghai up four points, so basically flat. But the Nikkei was off 116 and the uh, Hang Seng off 69. Now, all three of those markets are still signaling to us that they want to move to higher ground. You're over in Germany right now, the DAX is up 174 and the FTSE is down 51. And really the same signal there. We're not looking at the charts, but I do know that price is pulling back to key levels of support there. Gold, also really testing an area of support. It's down nine bucks right now, trading out at 1627. Silver's off 38 cents at 1831. You've got um, natural gas is out down another quarter, no bottom yet in sight there. Uh, natural, uh, uh, light sweet crude is up 38 cents, 84.89 is what it's printing out there. And the US dollar index, again, there's a 10 minute delay that I have here, but it's up 57 ticks, trading out at 113.39. In fact, let's do this here just for a quick overview. Let's just take a look at our nine panel market update chart. So we'll begin by taking a look at the ES mini up in the upper left hand side. So we can see here as price is pulled back into its daily profile. So now the next area of support or potential support is right around that center. And that center is 3629. Although I'm not showing it, the oscillator and change line is at about the same area. Spot politics still above its 50 day exponential moving average. Things will not get rocking and rolling to the upside unless there is a close below that 50 day exponential moving average. That is currently printed at 2845. The spot VIX trading out at 3022. You can see that the NQ is back inside its profile. It never left its profile. It's been consolidated between 10, 733 and 11, uh, 231. U.S. dollar index, again, trading higher this morning. I do have a 10-minute delay here. Uh, nonetheless, it's above the top of its daily profile. It's with inside a, a weekly profile. Uh, take it above its weekly profile as well. Um, and this is suggesting to run back to its uh, recent high at 114.74. I mentioned that gold is testing support. It's both a TD9 count support level at 1627.7. And below that, the Rhodes Mintum indicator support at 1622.20. That's the key level to be watching there, 1622.20. You get a close below. Below that, that says lower price. Now, today is going to complete a TD9 count bottom for gold on the daily basis. Yesterday was bar number nine. Today is the bar following bar number nine. So that also means even if we did get a close below 1622.20, in order for the markets to suggest that gold, that is, that it wants to continue to move lower, you'd see the need, you would need to see a close below today's low. I don't know what that is. I know what it is right now. It's 1621.10. 
I don't know what it will be at day's end. But nonetheless, you do have a TD9 count bottom signal going into another TD9 count and Roach momentum indicator signal. If we get a bullish reversal candle today, you've also got a second Roach momentum indicator bottom. The case of silver here, pulling back, but still above the uh, support of its uh, daily bottom of its profile at 1823 and trading in between a rising and descending trend line out here. If we take a look at late sweet crude, uh, got a little bit of a rally, but yesterday is kind of an interesting signal here. What I mean by that is price had closed below the bottom of its daily profile. The daily profiles are the ones that are in blue. The green ones are the ones that are the weekly. Yesterday's move, so we had two consecutive, more than two consecutive close below the bottom of the daily. And yesterday's rally found resistance where a counter trend move to the upside would find resistance. And that's at the center of its bullish structured profile. That price point is 86.75. So unless price gets back above the daily, at least the bottom of the profile, 8535 today, this could be signaling to you and I that price wants to make a move down to 7967. If we take a look at natural gas, you can see the A to B equals C D pattern to the downside out there. Its next price projection area would be the one to two A to B equals C D area. That's at the five dollar and twelve cent level. Uh, any bullish reversal candle that forms between now and then would confirm a buy the D point pattern. And if you take a look at the 30-year Treasury, continuing to trade lower down at 118.31. Uh, but a week from, well, I guess uh, it's not next Friday that's the end of the month. It's the following Monday. And if uh, we see a close below, I think it's 121.30 out there. That just spells curtains and suggests, well, rates are going to rise and that the 30-year uh, Treasury is going to continue to move lower. So that's a good overview of the markets out there. Let's go take a look at uh, some more details. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside of the ES Mini. So we're going to change our windows. We're going to go to our multi-set of time frame charts out here. And it begins with the uh, daily. Then you've got the five-hour, four-hour, two-hour, 60, 30, 15, and the 10-minute chart. Now, the, the chart pattern that sticks out the most to me as we speak right now is really the one coming from the two-hour time frame chart, the 120-minute chart out there. So I'm just simply going to expand that. And I'll explain the reason why the two-hour chart is the one that I find most interesting right now. First, we have a nice TD9 count top that formed, so we know where the high is at. Price then made its move back to its breakout level of support of 36.88. Finally, really broke through that area at uh, 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, remained below it, really setting up an A to B equal CD to the downside. So that's drawn in there by those blue lines. So we know that it has at least achieved that one-to-one -one price target. Well, in doing so, on a two-hour time frame, this also went ahead and confirmed a TD nine-count bottom. So that says that that low, this low that came in at uh, eight or 6 o'clock this morning, that low is 36.47. A close below 36.47 is going to suggest to run to 36.09, unless some type of bullish reversal candle were to form before that, which would then generate a buy the D point, or in this case here, a Gartley buy pattern. But right now, you've got a key area of support that is being tested. You want to keep an eye on that. That is the TD9 count low that occurred on bar number nine. Again, that's 36.47. We're trading at 36.49. Now, if we switch over from the two-hour chart, and start taking a look at the smaller time frame, the intraday chart. So we have any kind of bottoming signals here. Well, it turns out the 10-minute chart had a TD9 count bottom. That formed in the bar following bar number nine. Again, that's 36.47. So if we get a close below that, that negates that signal and it sets up a small A to B equals CD to the downside on a 10-minute time frame chart out here. I don't have any kind of bottoming signals on the 30 or the 15. Surely there is a a A to B equals CD pattern out there, just like we're showing here on the 60-minute time frame chart. But it's really going to be that 3647 level that is going to be a key area for us to watch and observe. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios, for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. 8.18 in the morning. If you're listening uh, at the normal time, thanks so much for doing that. We've got the uh, the charts up here, four of the charts for the uh, equity future contracts for the two-hour time frame. Inno Visual inside the Tiger's Den says, uh, wow, I see why you picked the 120-minute chart out there. We were taking a look at the TD9 count. Part of the other reason why I picked that 120-minute time frame, uh, you know, is uh, because I take a look at these multi-time frame charts. You know that. You see that each day out there. And I'm always looking for synergy. I'm looking, you know, can we find four, can we find a time frame or time frames where each of them are generating good signals for us to uh, watch? Now, because we're pattern traders here during uh, this, uh, the, during the Trader's Edge show, uh, what we can see here on the two-hour charts is each of these have TD9 count tops. So you can see that. So price needs to take those levels out in order to suggest to us that the move lower is over and there's going to be a further rally. We also had a nice TD9 count bottom. We took a look at that for the ES Mini. We have one for the NQ. Now, the NQ, slightly different time schedule than the ES Mini. The NQ is going to complete its TD9 count, the bar following bar number nine, as we come to the 10 o'clock hour. That's the lower low out there. So between at, uh, at 11 o'clock, you'll know what the low was during that 10 o'clock session out there. And if price is trading below that, that tells us we're headed lower. Now, headed lower, the price target on a two-hour time frame would be 10, 7, 71, 50. Uh, the uh, Russell 2000, uh, it is actually right now, the only pattern it had, it just negated, I believe, uh, 16, 1698, 60. Yeah, 1698.30. It did have wave number seven. That's letter G out there. But price has already uh, peaked uh, below that or, or pushed below that area. So that doesn't have a bottom signal. Its bottom signal, if there is one here, is at the 1696.80 level. That's a TD9 count breakout area. You can see a nice TD9 count uh, on the uh, Dow equity future contract. That completed at 8 o'clock. That says a uh, close at 10 o'clock below its low, which is 3177, says lower price. The lower price target here would be the 29.805 area. So it's really about, you know, about really trying to identify 
um, the sets of charts or time frames that are providing us with the most information. Now, I prefer it not to be a two hour chart because you got to wait, you know, in this case here till 10 o'clock uh, to get the uh, next uh, signal. So, we, you know, we look to the intraday charts. And so speaking of looking to the intraday charts here, we'll just simply go ahead and take a look at another level of support that I'm watching the ES mini uh, hit here right now. And that is its Apogee pivot point, which is at 3644.25. So Apogee, which is the point in time where the moon is furthest from the Earth during the current lunar phase. That took place on October 17th. I think it was 6.20 in the morning, if I am not mistaken out there. And what we do, or what I do, is I identify the exact price uh, where price is trading at that moment in time, and I just simply mark that. And for some reason, reasons I don't understand, I just know that it works. It either acts as a, a, key, a, it acts as a key level of support or resistance. In this case right now, it is the support area. So 36.44, 25. We're trading just slightly below that. This is a 30-minute chart. I prefer to use a 30-minute time frame when it comes to whether or not a key area of support or resistance has failed. Um, and uh, so that's a th time frame charts that you see up here on the screen. So right now, between the daily ES mini 120 minute time frame chart, price pulling back to a very key level on a 30 minute, the Apogee pivot point out there, it's going to be interesting. Now, if we take a look at the NQ, you'll see an A to B equals CD down pattern that I've drawn in here. Price is below that 1108. Uh, if price continues to move lower out there, it needs to get down to 10.90150, one to get to the one to one A to B equals CD, but also that happens to be its apogee pivot point. We can see there was a nice little rally this morning inside of Lightspeed Crude. We can see that, you know, over the last many hours out here, prices found resistance at that apogee pivot point, 85.07. That's a level I would note on your pad of paper. If you see Lightspeed Crew trading above that, that suggests higher price. And Goldilocks is well below its Apogee uh, pivot point. So it's really about just simply coming back, take a look at the ES, the NQ, and so forth. Oh, did I not switch charts? Jeez, Louise, TV. I did not change the uh, charts out there. I'm sorry. So here's those charts. I don't wish to uh, have to repeat myself. But... Um, um, Shopify over here. Let me just get that. I'll leave that up here on the screen just for a moment, just simply so you can uh, copy that data down while I type in another instrument that uh, someone wants to look at out there. So that covers the. So in, in summary, I got the ES Mini. If if it's going to bottom, it's going to bottom basically right here, right now, as we speak, give or take out there, because price is pushing back to these areas of uh, support. So let's do this here. Let's do this here. Um, got three minutes. I'm going to do this. We'll go to the request uh, after this little segment here. But, you know, I, I, there was a, uh, when I logged in this morning, I was reading a couple of comments just inside the Tiger's Den just to see what folks were talking about. And what I did was I noticed something that I noted, I noted something that uh, that caught my attention. It was posted by Dudette. Uh, in the uh, in the Tigers Den. I thought her observations were, were pretty interesting. I just wrote one of them down, which was that uh, she wrote Pakistan. Pakistan is ready to ignite. The UK is in turmoil, right? France is on strike and people are queuing up for gas for hours. Then she went on to say U.S. partners, meaning those countries are going to put a lot of pressure on the U.S. to have the Fed lift the foot off of the uh, pedal out there. But the Fed has indicated to us they've got no interest in doing that. And we're seeing that play out. When we take a look at the 30-year uh, Treasury as an example. Let's pull up those charts out here. Um, make sure I'm on the right screen. I am. So if we take a look at a 30-year Treasury, I mean, this thing is just looking horrible. We're now, if I, on a monthly basis, uh, we're below the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD to the downside. Its next price target out here is uh, on the longer-term time frame is down at 108. Now, the reason I bring this part or why, why that caught my attention, because some of her other posts out there were, I believe there was one other post that was indicating, you know, the U.S. markets have held up pretty well, all things considered. So why is that? So the why is that the Bank of International Settlements, and there's a lot of great information that that you can garner out here. Uh, this is one that I uh, pay attention to, this little uh, CMF fact book out here. And I pointed this out yesterday, I think yesterday afternoon inside the Tiger's Den. And the question that I posed was, do you realize, does anybody understand, does anybody know how approximately how much fixed income is out there? And at the end of 2021, according to the Bank of International Settlements, there was $126.9 trillion. That's really the center little um, graph that we're uh, taking a look at out here. But the more interesting thing is that, and that's up from uh, back in 2012, uh, when that was at about 87 
trillion, so 126 trillion. But the more interesting thing here is if I just total up everything outside of the uh, U.S. out here, what that totals is uh, 77 trillion dollars. So if rates are going up in the U.S., we know that bonds are getting croaked everywhere. We see that here in the U.S. That's the same overseas at some point in time. So why is the U.S. market holding up better? than perhaps other markets out there. And the answer is because we see that the U.S., the dollar, right, that is the safe haven trade. Well, so too is almost anything U.S. dollar denominated, so to speak. And we are going to see this fixed income, certainly from overseas, make its way. And maybe it's already making its way over here. And that is likely some of the reason why our markets are holding up better than other markets. Now, the, the real important reason to show you that is because at some point in time here, which chart am I on? Yep. At some point in time here, that overall global flow of capital is what is going to lead our markets higher. We've seen that take place before in the past. This is just taking a look at the uh, euro versus, uh, uh, versus the S&P 500 and uh, in its global flight to capital. If we take a look at the euro right now, the euro looks like it wants to go head down to 0.844. The lows on a uh, closing basis takes us back into the uh, 2001 time frame out there. So good observation, Dudette. And, uh, and I think this is the reason why the U.S. markets are holding up better. See Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. 829 in the morning. Dow futures down 214 and Nasdaq's up 143. S&P 29. Russell's down 11. Gold's off 11 bucks as well. We're going to go take a look at some requests that have come in first here. The uh, chart, uh, the analyzer that I'm showing shows you all kinds of markets. It's got my multiple time frames up there. You got daily, weekly, monthly, 1530, 65, 130 minute time frame charts. It shows you what those market conditions are. Uh, shows you whether or not there is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, whether it's a uh, top or bottom out there. It shows you what the current uh, daily TD9 counts are for those instruments. 
uh, many of those as of last night. Uh, it shows you the uh, Chapman wave up and down uh, signals as we speak, tells you where the oscillator and change line is, whether it's support, the oscillator and change line is either support or resistance, I meaning price is above or below, and whether or not that, uh, that arrow is identifying whether the price oscillator is above or below zero out there. You've got your TD9 count support and resistance levels. You've got your TAS market profile levels out there. And then we have our last TD9 count top and last TD9 count bottom signal. I see that last bottom signal here just being cut off just a, a tad. So uh, subscribers get this. Uh, very helpful, uh, especially uh, understanding where support and resistance levels are for these larger time frames and what the current market conditions are. So I just thought I would share that with you in case you are interested in uh, testing out the uh, uh, Mastering Probability newsletter. So now let's go take a look at our first request. That came in from uh, Tim M. this morning at about 7.58. Uh, so let's get over to uh, that set of charts out there. And his request is to take a look at ticker symbol S-A-N-M. S-A-N-M? is uh, San Mina Corporation out there. And the question goes like this. I'm in a long position in San Mina. Could you please take a look at support levels on a daily and weekly time frame? So if we take a look at support out here, it's really going to be the top of its bearish structured profile that formed yesterday. And the top of that profile, because price closed above it yesterday, it's traded above it right now. So the very first level, Tim, to be paying attention to, is the top of that profile, and that's at 52.47. If price were to close below that, then your next area of support is going to be 51.45. And below that, 51.28 is its green oscillator and change line. If price were to close below that, then you're looking at 48.91. But right now, you've got a, what looks like an aid. You're taking out a prior swing point. Have you done that on a daily basis with volume? Well, that swing right here was a trading day of August 26. Volume on that was 261,000 shares. A few days ago when price closed above that, that was with 378,000 shares. So in essence, you've got a potential A to B equals CD to the upside. That was confirmed out there for the daily time frame. So I've given you the daily support and resistance areas. On a weekly basis, your support level is also gonna be at the top of its bearish structured weekly profile. Now, I'm assuming that price will close above it this week. 5091 is that uh, level. 5275 is where this uh, closed that yesterday. So as long as price remains above 5091, let's suggest, well, one, it says stay with that long position. Uh, we just took a look at a potential A to B equals CD to the upside on the daily time frame. The only signal of caution really comes from the monthly chart out here. The monthly chart shows we have a wave number seven signal. You've got two of them just you know, on how I start my counts out here. Uh, but we also have a Rosemont indicator signal price above its profile levels as well. This would really need a bearish reversal candle to confirm a uh, top out there. So I, I like uh, this. Uh, so nice trade there, Tim. Stay with that trade. I provide you with the support areas out there. If there's anything else that you need, uh, please feel free to uh, write back in. And thanks so much for taking the time uh, to uh, uh, for the request. Next request coming in from Hector and Patty. And they want to take a look at the, uh, uh, the real estate sector, XLRE. So the question by Hector and Patty says, happy, fantastic, fabulous Friday. Absolutely, and back at you. XLRE, on a daily and weekly, where would you draw A to B equals CD down patterns out there? Um, sitting here watching the XLRE like a trout about to pounce on a grub worm. Thanks, have a super weekend. Well, you do as well. So I've got the, uh, we'll, we'll go back and, and, and give you those A to B equals CD patterns, assuming that I can find them as well. Right now, I've just got those white background charts up on our screen. So let's just take a look at those. What we know about the energy, uh, the energy, the real estate sector is much like the market did back uh, last week on the uh, 13th out there. Was that last week or the week before? Uh, generated a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. And it looked like the real estate sector was going to break out on October 18th when price closed above the top of its profile. Unfortunately, yesterday, price got right back below. It says that that breakout was a false signal. So right now what you have in the real estate Hector, a real estate sector, Hector, is a consolidation between 33.50 and 35.35. If we look at the weekly time frame, this is going to complete or appears will complete a TD nine count pattern today. Um, or it will form that pattern today, it will complete that pattern next week because a lower low can occur on the bar following bar number nine. But what you do have, what you will have, is a confirmed bottom signal 
for the weekly time frame chart. Now, on a monthly basis, price is pulling back and testing its breakout level. That's after confirming the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. That area was 34.29. If that level fails, then 30.11 will become its price target. Now, your question was, can we try to draw in some A to B equals CD patterns? And the tool that I have that really does that is on the black background screens right now. So that's why we're going to go switch back over here. So I'd say the, the easier pattern to draw is start with the larger time frames. And so the monthly chart, I think, Hector, if you take a look at that, Patty, and everybody else that's watching, I think that because so we've gotten rid of a lot of noise out there. So here it's pretty easy to find the highest high. That looks like that was the month of December 2021 out there. So that's going to become our A point. Our B point was this move all the way down into June of 2022. The price got down to 36, 38.63. And then we had about a two-month retracement two-bar retracement, so to speak, up into August. So now what you can see on the XLRE is we have a clear. Now, that B point on a monthly basis at 154 million shares was passed with 127. This month right now, we're at 122. So you pass it with a lighter volume. Can you still do the A to B equals CD? Well, the answer is yes, right? So just the volume piece of it uh, gives us maybe a little bit more conviction but uh, that does not mean that an A to B equals CD is to the upside or the downside won't complete once you pass that B point. So that makes that kind of easy. I think the weekly charts also make it pretty easy here, Hector. The high, at least from, from where I pulled back, it's going to be that same high at 52.17. Uh, that's our A point. The B point out here, that's going to be the low from June 13th. And the C point is going to be the high that formed the week of August 15th. So now you've got that same A to B equals CD. Now it's B point had volume of 55 million shares it was passed with 33 million shares 43 million shares 43 million shares 49 million shares so again lighter volume but doesn't mean that the a to b equals cd pattern will not complete so now can we find something different on the uh, daily time frame well i don't know if it's different or not but what i am going to start with here is what i would say would be the smaller there's really a couple different a to b equals cd patterns so on the daily let's use the the one that is most current and that would be using that, that, so I'll draw them both in here. But you got August 15th's high would be the A point. The B point is going to be the low from September 2nd. The C point or the retracement, that B to C leg, takes us up into I of September 12th. 48% retracement. So here you can see that you're inside a daily profile with support at 33.50, resistance 35.35. Uh, you've got the confirmed by the D point pattern. That was that bull, bullish engulfing candle that formed at the 1 to 2 level out there. So, you know, there's larger ones that we can draw in here. For example, I could draw this A to B equals CD. This has got the high out here. There's going to be multiple A to B equals CD patterns with inside A to B equals CDs. That's no problem out here. June 14th looks like that was the uh, B point. And then again on August 15th. So here you can see that one to one level if we use that A to B equals CD out there. And again, this has a confirmed by the D point pattern. But when we looked at those white background charts, we already saw a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So now it's really all about support and support being the low of that pattern out there. So that's the real key level to be watching, Hector. And that's down at that low from the trading day of August, uh, October 13th. And that level is at 33.12. So those are your A to B equals CDs out there. That's for Hector and Patty. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well, folks. 877-927-6648. When we get back from this break, we're going to go take a look at Shopify and then ExxonMobil. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. 
trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Right now, it's uh, 842 in the morning. We've got uh, U.S. equity futures uh, pointing lower. Dow futures down 216. NASDAQ up 136. S&P 28. Russell down 10. Gold's off 20, uh, 12 bucks, trading at 1624. Silver down 41 cents. Lights recruit is basically flat, trading out at 8458. We're taking a look at Shopify here. This is for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. I think the request was just to take a look at it. My apology, I can't recall. But here's what we know about Shopify. A number one. I'm assuming that, uh, well, let's look at the weekly chart first. You've got a nice TD9 count uh, bottom out here, Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. The issue for Shopify is uh, getting back into its weekly profile. So S&P, that's really the key level of resistance. Price got up to it this week so far. 3071 is the number. We're trading below yesterday's close right now. Shopify is trading out in the pre-market at about, last uh, trade fired off at 2868 out there. So, but if price can overcome that 3071, that doesn't mean it's out of the woods. It's a bullish structure profile on a weekly basis that price closed below for more than two sessions out there. So the counter trend level on a bounce is 33.98. If price can close above that, then that suggests move to 38.89 and then 41.10. On a monthly time frame, Shopify last month formed a TD9 count, completed the TD9 count bottom, right at its second level of breakout support, 28.21. So you've got a valid bottom on the weekly and monthly. This is absolutely trying to form a bottom. But in order to really prove that to us, it's got to get above 33.98 out there. Now, yesterday, a uh, price did close above a swing point. This was only about a 30%, not a 0.382 retracement out there. So there's the potential that you've got an A to B equals CD to the upside that's formed here. I prefer to see about a 38% retracement, but 30 is going to be maybe close enough. But price needs to remain above that 29 72 level out there um, and we're trading below that as we speak right now so shopify this morning when it opens we know it's trading lower and on a 30 minute time frame chart what that's going to do is at least get to bar number nine that's between 9 30 and 10 and maybe the bar following nine so on a 30 minute basis snp it's very possible that shopify will form a bottom between the uh, uh between the open at 9 30 and uh, 10 o'clock uh, and 10.30. So between 9.30 and 10.30, uh, Shopify should form a uh, bottom and bounce from there. And if it doesn't, then what that's telling you is Shopify wants to pull back maybe that 28.04 level, perhaps even 27.07. Uh, now, in the pre-market, I did say it was trading out. So as we look at these 30-minute charts out here, last trade, right off at 28.70, which is, uh, you can see it's a 
only two profile lines out here. And the reason why you only see two profile lines on a 30 minute time frame is because the bottom and the center are at the same price area, 28.39. So that's a real strong area or should be a real strong area of support out there, S&P. So that's Shopify. I hope that provided you with the information that you're looking for. If not, just uh, ping me back and we'll get you that information. Last request that I've got so far is to take a look at Exxon Mobil. XOM is the ticker symbol. That's coming in from Alex. Alex writes in and says, uh, hey, Steve, Exxon Mobil high yesterday was 105. He's got his 105 even Steven. Will it go back to the yearly high of 105.57 short term? Thanks, Alex. All the best. So now we're getting pretty granular out here. Um, what we can see when we take a look at the Exxon Mobil charts here, Alex, is yesterday price closed above the top of its daily profile, or two days ago. And then yesterday was another close above it. So the move above resistance appears to be real. Now, Exxon Mobil in the pre market closed yesterday at 103.93, trade at 103.66. So it's still above the top of that daily profile. So the answer to your question would be the daily time frame is suggesting, yes, that is a likely possibility, getting back to that high. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price is also above the top of its weekly profile. Now, this would be week number one above it. And above it is the it is 101.37. So close above that this week says, OK, that's pretty cool. Now, we can see that price is headed into resistance on a weekly basis. That was established by a Rhodes momentum indicator top that formed on June the 10th. 2022. That was a bearish shooting star candle. And that's your 105.57 level. Now, the volume on that was 147 million shares. This week so far in ExxonMobil, we've done 66. So price is moving into that level, but it's doing it with much lighter volume. So it may not take it out. You did close inside that swing point, even albeit on lighter volume as we took a look at it. But is ExxonMobil going to take that out? I would say if Lightsweet Crude really rallied today, the answer would be likely yes. But right now, uh, Lightsweet Crude is flat, trade out at 84.48 as we uh, speak. Um, so, yeah, I, I, and if I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart here, the 30-minute time frame chart for ExxonMobil shows what? Well, it shows a TD9 count top. Let's expand this out. you got a nice TD9 count top, 103.22 is uh, breakout support. So price is still above that. So ExxonMobil still looking pretty strong. Watch that 103.22 level. If price were to move below that, that suggests some uh, further lower price out there. And then you'll be watching that 103.32, which is the top of that daily profile out there. If price gets below that before it gets up to uh, and closes below the top of that daily profile. Uh, then I'd say the answer is no, it probably has some more work to the downside, such as getting back to 100.52, maybe 100.08 or even the 96.84 level. But right now, as we speak, based upon the pre-market, the way that things closed yesterday, yeah, it looks like price wants to go at least tag that high, that uh, bearish shooting star high. So Alex, thanks so much for taking the time right in. Much appreciated. I see we've got another question that has uh, popped up. This one coming in from, from uh, just someone says, can it look at the TLT? Looks like uh, maybe uh, Vic out there. So absolutely, we'll put the TLT screens up here. Um, and really what we should probably also do is go take a look at the 30-year treasury. Uh, but right now, let me get those TLT charts uh, populated. And what they tell, tell us is if you look at the daily time frame chart, no bottom signal at all. In fact, there was a TD9 count pattern. That got negated right away. Rhodes momentum indicator signal pattern. That was negated in one day. Yesterday, that pattern, or not yesterday, but the day before, that pattern was negated. This is the weekly chart. Looks like it's going to negate its TD9 count bottom pattern out there. The uh, monthly chart is saying the same thing. The TLT, the message here, Vic, is that uh, this wants to continue to head lower out there. If we take a look at the actual 30-year treasury charts out there, we've got those here to populate. This will take a few moments. This is telling us the same thing. The 30-year treasury we're going to see right now is trading below 123.30. That's its TD9 count bottom. We sort of looked at that. So it's at 123.30, and a price closes below that. Not this coming Monday, but the following Monday, the end of the month, that says this thing wants lower price. But the uh, daily time frame, you'll see that uh, it needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. We do have a potential wave number seven, that's letter G, on a weekly time frame. This is going to generate a TD9 count bottom on the weekly time frame. So I think the signal information is slightly different. If you're looking at the 30-year treasury, then the TLT, I'd be really focused on this. But uh, I've not seen any kind of bottom insight at all, even when we take a look at, uh, Vic, our intraday time per period charts out there. It doesn't matter whether it's a 30-minute, a 60-minute, a 120-minute, a 4-hour, 
or a five-hour chart. There is no bottom signal that Stevie sees at the moment. That suggests that the 30-year Treasury is going to continue to move lower out there. So, Vic, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Hope that provides you with the information that you were looking for. And if not, go ahead and write me back. Of course, what we're going to do here is we're going to a break in about uh, five seconds. And then we'll come back, and I think what we'll do is we'll go back and take a look at those uh, futures charts, the equity futures charts out here, the ES Mini. We can see that it's 60-minute time frame right now. It's going to form bar number nine of a TD9 count. That joins the TD, potential TD9 count bottom on the two-hour time frame chart. But at 10 o'clock, if price closes below 36.47, no TD9 count bottom on that two-hour time frame chart. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So you got Dow Equity Futures down 225. It's 8.54 in the morning. NASDAQ's off 142. S&P 31. Russell's down 12. We're looking at the ES Mini charts out here. The chart patterns on the ES Mini, we covered this earlier, TD 9 count bottom. That's in effect right now on the two-hour time frame chart. As long as price holds, that means closes above um, 36.47, that pattern remains in place. You'll see the A to B equals CD. That has uh, at least uh, formed out here. That needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm. And you can take a look at that either on a 30-minute time frame, a 60-minute time frame. Now, the 60-minute, the hourly time frame chart has a TD9 count bottom. Uh, well, I, I, it, it will complete that as long as in the next six minutes, the ES Mini does not rally above 36.52 and a quarter. And it doesn't look like that's what's going to happen. So you're going to also have a TD9 count bottom on the 60-minute chart. Now, that also says that that pattern could complete by 10 o'clock this morning. So that's what I would be watching for, those two charts out there, 60-minute 
and the 120 minute uh, time frame out there. And again, if we go back and we take a look at, I think I still have this up here, the 120 minute time frame charts for each of the equity future contracts. Yeah, that's what's going to pop up here. What you're going to see is you've got the uh, NQ has uh, now formed a TD9 count bottom as well. This is going to complete at 10 o'clock this morning. This is the two hour time frame out here. Uh, bar number nine is already completed. We've gotten the spike below the low of the pediment. Bar number eight actually would have qualified. Uh, but we've got a newer low. So whatever low, the low is between now and 10 a.m. inside the NQ, if price is trading below that at 11 o'clock when this show is normally aired, I don't know what that level will be, that's going to suggest to move back to the uh, 10 771 level. The Dow also has a TD9 count bottom, but that pattern will get negated if at 10 a.m. price closes below 3177. And again, um, in the case of the Russell 2000, it doesn't have a bottom pattern, but price sometimes it's just simply a bottom by pulling back to support. In this case here, its next level breakout support is at 1696.80. We're trading at 1697.40. So we got the potential for some bottom signals here as we come into uh, a half an hour before the uh, market uh, uh, open. But uh, please uh, stay tuned. Tommy O'Brien is up next with the morning market kickoff. I hope I provide you with enough uh, information and some numbers out there to pay attention to through your trading day. Have a fantastic Friday, a fantastic weekend, folks. And I'll see you back here on uh, Marvelous, Magnificent Monday. Take care. Be safe out there. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors.